super sweet. Cool. Okay. So we've got two of the shocks that we used on the test session. The new Super Deluxe Air, Ultimate Air, and then the new Super Deluxe Coil Ultimate. Um, they feature the same neck valve, same reservoir, um, which has a pedal lockout, a tooled high-speed compression adjust that comes set to a zero position, but has a plus and a minus so that you can move away from that zero setting and have, add high speed or um, reduce high speed compression. And then on the other side here, we have this low speed compression knob, which is has a zeroed out position, which happens right here, and then has a plus setting and a minus setting. And you can see Brad was riding this here in the two plus position. And this neck is shared between the air and the coil. Sticking with the air over here, um, going to this side of it um, and what makes it particularly air. So rebound adjusting ring is still up here like it is on the original um, Super Deluxe Air. 15 clicks of rebound um, as opposed to the, the 10 that the previous version had. We do have new DU hardware um, that has this nice little preloaded lip to it. So um, just get a little bit better fitment inside of frames and that's, that's new on this one. And then you can See, this shock was specifically tuned for Brad's high tower. Moving down from the rebound, we've got this air can on here. There's actually two air cans available for the new Super Deluxe. The linear air can, which is this one, and then the progressive air can. Um, and they are what they sound like. So the linear air can makes a more linear curve and the progressive one has a more progressive curve. Stepping down from that, what you can see we've got going on here with this damper body. This is a, this is a 55 stroke damper body and it is also a position sensitive bottom out damper body. So there's a needle down here. So for the last 25% of the stroke, you're gonna get hydraulic velocity sensitive bottom out damping on this, which is a really nice feature to have because it means that you don't have to rely on air positive air cam tokens to get that end of stroke ramp. You can really blend the air spring tuning with this bottom out um, control system so that you've got a nice balanced bottom out system in the shock. And then this shock, because it was on a Santa Cruz high tower, but it's available um, for any of the bikes that it makes sense, has an eight by 30 bearing system so that we get really good um, free play back there. A couple of the other changes that we made on the inside of this shock, we've got more oil flow up to the head valve by, by, by just increasing the size of all the porting through there. We've also moved the seal head further up into the air can so that there's more structural rigidity in the system. So there's basically more bushing overlap inside the air can. Moving to this also allowed us to switch to a sized bushing at the seal head and at the air can. And what that means is that we can reduce our squeeze on our O-rings on our seal head and on our, uh, on our air can seal down here. And that just means there's less friction in the system, which is a really great thing to have. Um, and then the last thing I note on is kind of going along with the hydraulic bottom out, which is an option, not, not a requirement, but all the shocks have this. The seal head now is a cupped seal head, and we have a castle bottom out bumper instead of the previous shock, which had an O-ring up here. But we now have like a castled proper bottom out bumper, similar to what you would see on a coil shock in the air shock. Cool, moving over to the coil shock and talking about some of the changes that we have um, over here, because there's quite a few of them. I'm gonna kind of start up here again, mention head valves the same as it was before, but we do have this additional feature right here, which is this purple valve, um, which we call HBO. And again, you'll see that it comes in a zero position and then you can plus or minus from that zero position. And this is your hydraulic bottom out on your coil shock. On the coil shock, it affects the last 20% of the travel and it is adjustable. So unlike on the air shock where it's a fixed amount of force it's gonna provide, on the coil shock, you can dial that in and out. Now, the reason we did that is because on the air shock, you can adjust your bottom out control by adding or subtracting tokens. Whereas on the coil shock, this is your only way to control your bottom out feel. So we felt strongly that we needed to make this adjustable. That's a cool new feature and really opens up the number of bikes that can feel good with a coil shock on them because you can get that additional bottom out control in there. Kind of moving down the shock, Pretty straightforward. We do have a new preload collar that's got this nice little feature of a, a indicator on there so you know when you've got the two, um, two spins of preload on the spring so that you don't have it come loose. 
coil springs are uh, unchanged and doing great for us. So we're, we're really stoked with that. Down here at this end, and I'll, I'll spin this coil off while we're talking through this, the rebound adjuster ring, um, or rebound adjuster rather, has three millimeter tooled interface on it. So it's really nice because you can put your three millimeter tool on there and spin this in and out. And so if you have a frame where it's difficult to access, you can stick a three mil in in all these different places to be able to adjust your rebound and you don't have to worry about actually spinning your knob off because it's a one piece one piece knob on there. So that's, that's a pretty cool little feature that makes it easier to get to on some bikes. Uh, bottom out bumper has been tweaked on this one um, to be a bit bigger and a bit stronger. Just again, making sure we are um, making sure we're controlling that end of stroke as much as possible on the coil shock where you've got a linear, linear spring you're working with. Um, so there's this bottom out bumper that I was mentioning that's a bit big taller than it was before. This is a 62.5 stroke shock. So there's a little 2.5 millimeter spacer on there. This is one thing that's pretty important to mention. This coil shock uses two pistons. So the main piston and then the hydraulic bottom out piston. You're not gonna wanna clip this because if you clip this, your hydraulic pit bottom out piston is going to end up further up in the shock than it would be. And that's going to possibly create some options for crashing inside the shock. So I know that's something that some people have done in the past and you're not going to want to do that in the shock because of the hydraulic bottom out um, system in there. One other thing I would note is that we still have sag gradients on this shaft, which is a pretty sweet feature makes it a lot easier to set up your shock by yourself. You just take your bottom out bumper, slide it forward, set sag. Obviously it's a little bit harder when it's on the bike with the coil spring on there, but you can check your sag by yourself, which is a pretty sweet feature. Next thing I notice is that you'll see that this is shaft is one piece. This is a lot more structural rigidity, just makes the shock burlier and stronger, which is a great thing to have. Again, this is a shock off of a Santa Cruz bike. So you see there's a bearing mount here but you could have a standard mount on this side or trunnion mount on this side. And there's that guy. That's what the seal head looks like. Previous one used a pinned interface, but this one actually has a open-ended wrench to take the seal head off when you're getting it serviced. And that's it.